Episode 6, June, Daydream. I'm going to actually start this one off this time because i got a lot to say about this episode. Oh, and yeah. I think it's definitely going to be within the top three best episodes for this season. Yeah. I think for me, it, it's probably definitely top two for now. Although, since this is such an interesting episode, I wanted to kind of go straight into favourite scenes. Yeah. Because there is a lot of them. Oh, yes. What's yours? I'd say it had to be the very start. Because yeah. as soon as I kind of watched the start, I had to do a few double takes to be like, am I just seeing things or is this what's really going on? <laughs> and, the, and I really love that, yeah, reference to, um, I think it's a reference to Nosferatu. Yeah. Yeah. That's The opening scene was... Definitely up there for me. I think I'm gonna have to split mine up. It's uh, it's a tough one because I did really like the uh, the performance at the end. Oh yeah, that was really good too. But I think we'll come back to that. Yeah, definitely. Um, That's why I didn't bring it up. Yeah, but uh, as for other scenes, um, yeah, the opening was really cool. Uh, Although I didn't mention for episode five, my. F- like I really yep. like the start of episode five, the motorbike scene. Yeah. Like I, I, I don't think I said it in the recording of episode five, which we just did. Yeah. But I had in my head it's like, yeah, this is the best opening scene for the season. And I was like, you know, OP will, episode one had the best, but now it just went straight <laughs> to the intro. <laughs> yeah. But I guess now this episode eclipses it. I, I think I agree. Yeah, the opening scene for episode five was was really cool, very different. Yeah. Um, and I like that. Uh, Part six, just blowing it out the I, water. I think so. It is. I mean, it's very different again, but in a different way. Um, but I think another favorite scene for episode six for me was definitely once it gets to that midway point, oh, and yeah, you're definitely. starting to like question yourself as yeah. to where the story is going, and then you get the like the flashback. Um, so that was that was that was a favorite for me. I uh, say so, um, we may have to whip up the ging- the I uh, say the gingo board. <laughs> Where's my English? The bingo board because yep. I, I guess didn't we have some? We had a few things with D four fest, but I'm not sure if we specifically just mentioned uh, D four fest because yes. we did get a flashback of D four fest. So I was wondering if there's something we could kind of technically tick off. Um, let's, have, let's do that now while we got it up. So we got road to D four fest. D four fest main event. History of D4 Fest, no, considering now it's in the of. past, considering it was yeah. a flashback in the past tense. I th- so technically. S- kind of, sort of. I think when we put that in, that was more like going back to the first one where we would see like. Or like previous ones. Kind of like what we saw in the, the opening scene of, of um, first the first mix. mix yeah. Uh, I think we can, I'm going to tick it off just as a, under, as a technicality. Let me think. Let me, let me have a think. Might be a half tick. Okay, yeah, we'll go um, back to that. Yeah. Good point there, I think. Well, um, if we're going to get things out of the way, yeah. this episode's MVP. Yeah. Who's it for you? Because I'm... I was going to jokingly say Saki, but <laughs> she only shows up really at the end, although she does have a minor appearance early on. Uh-huh. Yeah. But I think, to be perfectly honest, it would have to be... I said ju- hashtag justice for Rinku, so I guess Rinku. <laughs> Uh-huh. So there's just for Rinku. Um, that she's got one vote for me, even though yep. I think, although seriously, I'd probably pick Maho. Yeah, it's um, but the thing is, she didn't really do anything. That's yeah, that's my conundrum as well. It's sort of like I, I was initially thinking it would be Maho, but then once you get to the end, uh, you kind of it it switched me up a bit. Um, and now I'm, I'm sort of more leaning towards like a three-way tie between uh, Mooney. I was going to say, let me guess. Yeah, I was about to say, the first one was going to be Mooney, yeah. Ray, and I guess Rinko. Yeah, pretty much. Um, I was also going to say Dahlia, <laughs> just because of that one scene. <laughs> so I guess it's the most we're divided on this on an episode when it comes to MVPs. I think so. Um, but yeah, it's it's a tough one. I did also think... You know, because like you, they, there's the two scenes with like the group meetings. Um, that I guess there wasn't necessarily a standout, but it, it kind of showed how like almost not from every unit, but like there is kind of a member from every unit that was present there that could speak English. 
So they're kind of like a, another bunched in. Yeah, uh, it's like I, I didn't. I'd like to see the results for this episode. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. I think. Uh, so yeah, no, no clear MVP for me, but there's uh, some top contenders. I guess I'm gonna have to stick with Rinku just because. Yeah, hashtag justice for Rinku. <laughs> Fair enough. I like it. All right. So one one thing that I wanted to bring up is something that's been very much reoccurring throughout uh, pretty much since the first episode. I would say um, the use of music from First Mix. <laughs> that that wasn't what I was going to mention. But I was just say reuse of the uh, First Mix OST in some that parts. Is, yeah, that has been reoccurring as well. But definitely, and we definitely saw it at the end, both at the start and at the end of the this episode with the preview for episode um, episode seven, but the constant one upping of everyone. So it's like every episode we see, or almost every episode so far, we see a performance at the end, and then the next group is always has this pressure to one up. Yeah, yeah. So I wonder how long that's going to continue. Um, Probably for the rest of the season. I was to hazard a hazard to guess. Yeah, I, I would think so. But then I'm sort of, I, I'm worried that it's going to get old. The same sort of thing every time of like, we have to do better than the previous group. Um, oh, so. I guess it'd, it'd be interesting if that, like kind of, they do it up to the crescendo. So like the finale is actually like horrible. <laughs> yeah, that's, that'd be funny. Cause that's something we haven't seen yet is like everyone's songs been, yeah, at least within the show, the canon of the show, everyone's songs been great. Um, obviously, we've had our own opinions, but oh yeah, especially with um, DMF, I think it's the name of the Mermaid A song. Right. Um, I was about to say, oh my god, but that's a different Mermaid A song. Yeah, that's an actual good one. <laughs> but um, Although I guess DMF's good. Yeah, I guess within not good, not good enough. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I guess within the show, we haven't seen a, a train wreck performance yet, so that would be. Interesting. As soon as you say that, Woodstock comes to mind. <laughs> but I don't think we'd get anything that much of a train wreck. I don't think so. But that uh, would be funny though. Yeah, yeah. That would be very interesting to see how that, that would play out. But um, yeah, that that's my my concern is that you know they're, they're just going to keep having that as sort of like a, a running gag, I guess. Um, well, they did surprise so, yeah. us with this episode though, so we'll that see is, if they can... Who's pull the rug from under us again? For sure, for sure. They sort of, even yeah. when I knew there was something wrong going on, it was not until yep. the end where I was like, "Oh, yep. so, yeah." So even when I kind of was aware that there's something going on, it was still able to pull the rug from out under me. But I think that's just yep. speaks more of my intelligence <laughs> than anything else. For sure. Um, so Although yeah, I wouldn't say I'm stupid, <laughs> right. but I wouldn't say I'm smart either. That's uh, that's most people, I think. Um, but uh, yeah, that's a that's a really good point. Is that they still kept that same theme of like we have to one up, but then completely uh, sort of fake out with like, oh shit, this yeah. isn't going to end well. Yeah. So that was an interesting way of doing it. So hopefully, if they do continue down that path, that they yeah throw some curveball episodes in like this one, which yeah, um, definitely really cool. Moving Although, on, I guess <laughs> kind of sort of on the subject of favorite scenes, even though we kind yeah. of. Kind of ended that a while ago. Is um, well, I want to explain my other favorite scene, and sure. that's the scene between well, the fight between Dahlia and Maho. That is, yeah, I <laughs> bloody lost my <laughs> shit when I saw that scene. That was very cool. Not only, but I lost it for probably not the reason you were expecting that I lost right. it. Okay, Why? because um, well, let's see if you can figure it out. Not sure. I mean, I lost it just because like, the, does it now put D four DJ in a completely different? Anime car- <laughs> category? No, <laughs> but it's a nice callback to some of the characters' backstory. Because right, if you play the game, you would find out that yeah, that both Dahlia and Maho did karate. Ah, oh, right. Because there's a, a dialogue exchange between the two talking about that, like with Dahlia yeah. being like, "Yeah, you want to fight." And after that thing, I was like, yes, I want to actually see a match between the two, even though I knew it was kind of going to end like it did yeah. in a similar fashion that it did in this episode. Nice. Considering that um, Maha only really picked it up for like self-defense and that, so yeah. wasn't as dedicated as Dai, who was a black belt. 
Makes sense. And they even paid enough attention to detail that, yeah, Dahlia was wearing a black belt if you weren't, if you didn't notice that. For sure. Although I did like it how like um, when, when it did go into the fight scene that they were actually in their, what they usually wear, what the characters actually wear rather than the um, the the karate uniform. So that was cool. But yeah, that was... That was a really interesting, um, interesting scene and another little curveball. And it's something that they've sort of been bringing up a little bit here and there of like throwing in different animation styles. Um, you know, they've been doing a lot of mixing of the new sort of 3D animation style, which they've been, um, which is looking really nice, particularly in this episode. Um, you know, those scenes where they're walking in the rain, I felt the, the animation was just much nicer than usual. Um, even Low, though it's the usually animation pretty good. wise, it's been better than first mix. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, but then Although, yeah. saying that first mix was still pretty good. Yes. But then yeah, them throwing in the, the 2d animation style as every now and then is really cool. And yeah, for this one with like being that the, the eight bit. Uh, uh, Game Boy style it was really it, cool. It looked a bit more like 16 bit, but they're just probably splitting hairs. Yeah, I really like that. I'm interested or hoping to see more of not that particular style, but yeah, them just throwing in little cool references here and there to different animation styles. Oh, yeah, definitely. Although I want to get out the last of my favorite scenes. It's just yep. um, when, yeah, Maho got home and was like, oh, re- rebroadcast a D4 fest. Yeah. Even though she was just staring at a um, blank TV screen. That was interesting. I'm trying to think, <laughs> wasn't there a, a film that did something similar to that? I, I, I feel this entire episode is sort of a reference to many different films. and I can't quite put my finger on what exactly they're trying to reference. Um, oh, no. Although if she was staring at Static, that would have been an obvious reference to the, um, what is it, that film called The Ring? Yes. But yeah, I'm trying to think of like... I was going to say, it kind of gave me sort of Shining vibes. The Shining vibes. There we go. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. I get that a little bit And then sure. what's that one that's like, I see dead people. I'm trying to remember the name of that film. Uh, Signs, I believe that is. Maybe? I f- yeah. There's, I feel there's many references. I think, yeah... Someone who's more educated on us on horror <laughs> films should probably be able to probably pick out a more accurate reference. For sure. But yeah, my my thought is that it wasn't... But maybe Exorcist, because I think one of the Exorcists had a scene similar to that, mm. I think. Yeah. But I could just be, again, misremembering. For sure. But yeah, my theory is that it, it isn't referencing one specific movie, that it's sort of like taken ideas from... Many different horror films. I guess stemming off of that favorite scene, um, something that that was also new in this episode was uh, introduction of siblings. Um, oh yeah, yeah, sort of. I knew she had siblings because while I think it's brought up in dialogue, but also it is mentioned in the wiki. Yeah. So this is definitely not new news to me. Yeah. Well, not. But it's definitely new that they actually show them. New to the show is what I meant, yeah. Um, but those who are in the know are in the know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So uh, I thought that was cool. That um, And that's why I like actually kind of doing this because I'm coming from, um, well, my perspective is one of someone who's really familiar with the um, the IP and yours as well from, I guess, a more of a regular person. Yes, just a casual viewer. So, yeah, I thought that was cool and particularly that, you know, they didn't, obviously, you know, they've had this plan for a while, but, yeah, that... You know, there was a little brother as well because there isn't many male roles in this show. So I thought that was interesting. Um, well, you need to kind of get the diversity. <laughs> got uh, little man. You got, oh, I'd say little man. Young man. Young but man. Now, as soon as I say that, I get the YMCA <laughs> stuck in my head. Uh, I yes. say young man. <laughs> God damn it. Let's, um, get a, let's quit while we're ahead. But yeah, I, I thought that was cool. Um, any, any, any low points for you in this episode? I think I do kind of like having the kind of the wall pulled over my eyes, but at the same time, it kind of gives me mixed feelings. Mm. And it's like my initial impression is like, yeah, I bloody love this episode, but yeah. also at the same time, like this makes no sense, even though it's like, <laughs> I figured it out and it's like, yeah, this makes sense. But then at the same time, it doesn't. And, and they sort of, yeah, do that at the end as well, where they're like, 
was this a dream? Did this actually happen? So even though before the performance, they sort of cleared it up of like, you know, this is what actually happened, but then they do another switcheroo and um, puts puts another question in, in there. Um, yeah, so yeah, like... Uh, after thinking about it for a while, I was like, this is more confusing than the Saw franchise. <laughs> which I don't know what people are on about. People say it's confusing, but yeah, I've watched it and it makes perfect sense to me how it plays out. For sure. it's. Uh, I think, I guess it's just kind of the way it feeds you information for those who are not paying attention. Yeah. But kind of be like, why is this happening? Yeah, yeah. But if you see the signs are there. For sure. I get you. Should we kind of start, well, wrapping things up? Yeah, there was one other thing that, oh, um, I guess with the theme that they sort of took with like the horror, bo- both the horror aspect, but then also the fact that they are um, speaking English <laughs> a lot more. Um, well, they did promise that in the preview. For they definitely it. did. Uh, I, I am a little bit confused as why they wouldn't have used October being spooky month with Halloween. Um, but that's... Yeah, I know that's kind of also another question yeah. that I kind of had in my mind and then forgotten. Yeah, I'm just, yeah, I'm just curious if anyone who has more in-depth knowledge of Japan, um, if maybe their spooky season is is June. Um, yeah. I would say yeah, it could have something to do with Japanese culture, but which I say that, but... Japanese culture is sort of, I wouldn't say quite my expertise. I would say kind of wheelhouse. Sure. So I know a thing or two about it, but I wouldn't call myself an expert on it. Yes. Uh, let us know if if you have any any theories on that. And the other thing that I did want to bring up just very quickly um, before we get on to, I guess, the song itself is the fact that Maho is speaking English but thinking In Japanese, Japanese yeah. Um, That's something I picked up on pretty quick. So yeah, I wonder if that is a a reference to any to a specific uh, movie. And it actually even got me wondering: would they um, switch it around for the dub? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's something that I thought as well. Uh, I don't think it would work, but it would be interesting. It definitely would be. So yeah, uh, if you're a uh, a Japanese viewer, let us know how you found this episode being, I guess, uh, majoritarily in. In English instead of uh, your native tongue. And um, we know there's quite a few of you. Yes, we've seen the, the analytics. We see you watching. Um, all right. So, so, yeah, if you're from Japan, just um, just say hi down in the comments. For sure. The comments. <laughs> the comment section. <laughs> yeah, the comment section. To the song. Um, Didn't we sort of kind of bring it up anyway? A little bit, but not in depth. I guess my question for you is where does this rank? I am not sure. <laughs> like it's interesting, but I would say it's not it's not my jam. But I kind of find it interesting what they did. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and and what about in comparison to the songs that we've seen so far? I think just weeks? because I probably would have listened to it. I'd listen to DMF, but yep. I find it more interesting than DMF. So I'd probably rank it above DMF. Yep. Fair enough. Um, for me, uh, this is a tough one because I actually, I, I really like it. I, it's, I don't know if it overtakes uh, Rondo's song for me, but it's, it's up there. I can't um, even remember the name, isn't it? Like, um, I will say Arakana or something like that. Something like that. But yeah, it's, uh, for me, it's, it's getting I've, up there. Although if I was to rank that Rondo song, I'd tie it with, yeah, with Overwhelm. Yeah, uh, I think at the moment, I think this is a this is a runner up, close second. Um, I really liked it. it was so where does overwhelm come in on your list? Maybe maybe number three so far. I think. Um, yeah. Although Could- I am curious what Total Man song would be. I think that's the in- unit that I'm the most interested in right now. Well, that's probably because they're coming up next. Yeah. But yeah. I, I would say a lot of the songs that I've heard recently, they're just absolute fire. They even definitely though, have been. Yep. Even though that those songs have already been in the game for like a year or two, that yep. the uh, most recent cover track to come out on Spotify had some bangers from them. For sure. 
Oh yeah, they they've definitely been probably one of the most consistent. I think um, yeah, with their previous releases with all the covers. Um, but before we get on to uh, theories for the next episode, um, the back to the performance of the animation was <laughs> yeah, <it's> pretty good, <laughs> pretty good. Although I would say it's definitely a bit more janky, but it makes sense. Yes. I think for me, like the songs coming up second, but the the actual performance is probably first. Um, I'd say yeah, like Maho's reaction was my reaction first time yeah. watching it. Yeah, just because yeah, it was the most I think funnest like so far. You like I think even if you're just in living on the street that I was living on yeah. when I was watching this episode, you think you could probably hear, well <laughs> audibly hear me say what the fuck. Yeah. <laughs> And I think that's fair for this was, episode. Yeah, it was like a pretty loud what the fuck when yeah. it came to the performance. For sure. That um that scene where it's like, oh, it's a different song and then just seeing, yeah, Zombie Rinky, that was when yeah. the audible what the fuck. Yeah, no, that's fair. I think uh, for sure. All right, moving on to theories for uh, the next episode, episode seven. What uh, are you... I don't know. <laughs> There's not really much to go off set for uh, both Toa and Noah wearing glasses, which I've got to say, Toa's cute as always, but Noah with those glasses, like, damn. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there, there really isn't much to go off of other than, again, sort of like that that theme of, you know, we have to one-up. Yeah. Um, I mean, in the title, is it You're So Cute? Uh, so You're So Kawaii. <laughs> Yeah, you're so cute. So how are you gonna say kawaii? <laughs> um, oh, let's see. Let's see how you you would say kawaii. Come kawaii. Uh, God, you can't even do it right. It's kawaii. Kawaii. I'm not. I'm not of this this universe. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, again, we don't really get a whole lot to go off of other than that. Um, I, was, but I was gonna warn the audience because I'm gonna try and. Replicate um, one of Noah's lines from the game. I don't think I could do it justice, but <laughs> I guess warning headphone users. Ooh, kawaii, mini chan. <laughs> Fair enough. Do you have any theories for the next episode? No, but I guess I got one. Noah yep. being Noah. All so right. on that bombshell. Thanks for joining us again for another episode of the D4DJ All Mix Review Series. Uh, let us know your thoughts on this episode, June Daydream. Uh, did it take you by surprise as it did us? Uh, let us know your thoughts on the new song from Happy Around. Um, where's it rank on your list so far of the song's features in All Mix? And check out the description box below for links to all our social media accounts. Jump on them and check them out. Give us a follow. Check out the Patreon account where yeah. you can sign up for a couple bucks a month for some exclusive content. Which hopefully the first bit of exclusive content should drop. I'm going to warn you, it's probably not great, but <laughs> it's kind of one of the things that we promise. So I guess you can have, well, you get what you pay for. For sure. Um, and remember, give this video a like, share it with your friends, and we'll see you in the next one. Yep. Sayonara. <laughs>